My name is Dr. Meeta Singh. I am the service chief and the section head of sleep medicine at the Henry Ford Sleep Disorder Center. It's located in Detroit, Michigan. Well, I think that broadly you can divide sleep issues into three main categories. The first is that athletes, because of their long seasons, their night games and their travel, they often don't get enough sleep, so they may be sleep deprived. So that's the first issue is they're not getting enough sleep on a regular basis. And as the season progresses, their sleep debt tends to accumulate. The second thing is that because they often travel and they cross time zones for competition, they can get jet lagged. And so chronic jet lag and the effects of jet lag on performance and health is the second issue. And the third, of course, is that athletes, you know, they may have difficulty winding down, they may have insomnia, so they may have specific sleep disorders. And um, that I would th say that's the main third category. So when you think about sleep disorders, in my opinion, the, the sleep issue that is most important, of course, is not getting enough sleep. But really, the three main sleep disorders would be either sleep apnea, the second is insomnia or poor sleep, and the third is circadian rhythm disorders. And I can go into each and every one of them. So sleep apnea is a disorder in which your throat closes up on you when you're trying to breathe at night, and, you, and so you may stop breathing. You may do this multiple times at night, and because of this, you sleep poorly, and so you're less awake the next day, but also it has cardiovascular effects, so it can increase the, the risk of heart disease, stroke, uh, uh, hypertension, etc. Now, there are some sports in which um, in which having a large neck size and you know having large shoulders etc is a advantage like rugby players or wrestlers or football players those players have a higher chance of having sleep apnea then of course in addition to this you know people with small jaws um, they can also have sleep apnea uh, so when it comes to sleep apnea typically Athletes may not present like the general population, so they may they may be uh, there may be vague complaints of tiredness, snoring, morning headache, headaches, dry mouth, and all those complaints should be a sign to the team doctor that this person needs a sleep consultation. And the correct way to diagnose and treat sleep apnea is to do a sleep study in which we find out if they have sleep apnea, and then. Um, you know, based on whatever the results are, give treatment. The, the second large category is insomnia or problem sleeping. So, you know, athletes have multiple reasons why they would have difficulty winding down. So we know that athletes have difficulty sleeping before a competition because the worry about the competition itself keeps them awake. Then after the competition, you know, immediately after a competition, their body temperature is high, their cortisol levels are high, they may be in pain, they may be anxious or, or, or excited about how the competition actually went. All this will make it more difficult for them to fall asleep. You know, oftentimes athletes will drink caffeine they, because that's a stimulant and it helps performance enhance. It's in present in many of the energy drinks that they drink just before the competition. And that's still in their system when they're trying to fall asleep later. And that will make it more difficult for them to fall asleep. And so, uh, you know, the hyper arousal that is associated with being a good athlete may prevent sleep from happening. Uh, you know, the typical way that this would be diagnosed is if an athlete talked about this to their team doctor. And then they would, you know, would do a, a consultation to find out they have an insomnia disorder. Typically, the way we treat insomnia is either with medication and with something called CBTI, which is cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. The problem is that once the season has begun, there really isn't much time during the season for the athlete to address this. So, you know, this. If you know that you have a sleep disorder, the best time to address it is post-season because now you have time to take care of your health. The third, the third main category would be um, circadian rhythm disorders. So, uh, 
you know, oftentimes athletes, because they are, they have to train at a certain time and the time is decided by, by their team that may be misaligned to their own biological clock. And if it, there's a misalignment, they may have difficulty both initiating or maintaining sleep. And so that's just something to keep in mind. That, again, will need addressing by a trained sleep physician. I think, I think you know, in sleep disorders is just a very small category of the issues that athletes can have. So think about how the lack of sleep or how poor sleep can affect performance the next day. And, you know, I always like to divide this again into categories. So the first reason that athletes need good amount of sleep is because you need sleep for a, for a quick reaction time, for adequate sleep, uh, speed. And so, you know, if you, instead of getting 8 hours in bed, you get 6 hours in bed, your, sleep, your reaction time, uh, which is normally about a quarter of a second, either doubles or triples. Now, that may not make much of a difference to, say, you and I when we are talking here, but can make all the difference when you're competing at a national level, right? Reaction time is everything. The other thing is that cumulative sleep loss results in cumulative detriments to your uh, your speed as well as your accuracy. So you, it's not just getting good enough sleep before the game, but actually getting good sleep on a regular basis because the deficits will accumulate. <clears throat> the second thing is that <coughs> the second thing is that you need sleep to play the intelligent game. So when you are sleep deprived your prefrontal cortex, which is that part of the brain that is responsible for quick decision making, especially in time crunch situation, becomes, um, it gets less blood supply, while your emotional brain becomes overactive. And so what that, what that uh, does is that, you know, that may, means that, that that may impair your decision making performance when you're supposed to make split-second decisions while you're on the court or on the field, right? De whether you decide to, to bat a certain kind of ball, whether you decide to respond to a ball, you know, that's a split-second decision. You have to make it and you need enough sleep to make the right decision. The third reason why you need enough sleep is because, because if you don't get enough sleep, your chances of getting injured increase. So think about what we just talked about. If your mean speed is reduced, if your accuracy is reduced, if you're making bad decisions, then the chances of you getting injured are more, you know, you're more likely to put yourself into positions. You're more likely to land in such a way that you are <coughs> likely to get more injured. Then you need, once you're injured, you need sleep for muscle recovery. So, you know, growth hormone, which is essential for muscle recovery, is secreted only during your deep sleep. The testosterone, which is really important for muscle strength and vigor, that is profoundly affected by the number of hours of sleep you have. Okay, so the other reason you need enough sleep is because lack of sleep will impair the way you utilize glucose. Now, you know, professional athletes, they can spend a lot of money on getting the right nutrition. Nutrition, sleep, and practice are the three, you know, they're the three pillars of health and performance. So you want to make sure you get adequate um, sleep. Um, you know, there is a study uh, which we did at Henry Ford Sleep Lab that looks at the impairment in performance that you get from drinking alcohol, and then you compare it to the impairment that you get of, from getting sleep deprived. So, you know, getting six hours of sleep is equivalent to drinking two to three beers on performance tests. And, you know, none of us would ever think about drinking two or three beers before we went and batted for India. But, you know, oftentimes we don't, we get in less sleep because we think we can get by with less sleep. And, you know, that, and that is something that, that, um, misinformation needs to be tackled by education so that you explain to them that you know you really do need 
more sleep to, sleep, to play better. So all of us have biological clocks. So our cells have biological clocks that keep time in a 24-hour period. And that clock is synchronized to the environment by exposure to light and dark. So when, when all of any of us, when we take a jet and we rapidly cross three or more time zones and we get to a new time zone, our biological clock is scrambling to get synchronized to the new environment. And that's what jet lag is. Now, in athletes, what, the, what happens with athletes is that they often have to cross time zones to compete. And they have to compete as soon as they get to the new destination. And so they can often be jet lagged. So you want to, you want to help uh, give them tips, et cetera, and plan it in such a way so that you can minimize the effect of jet lag, not just on their mood, et cetera, or their sleep, but on their performance the next day. So, you, so that they can get, they can, they can feel fresh the next day while they're performing. It is absolutely not a fair competition, and and this was, you know, we, there's a lot of data to support it. So in in America, the East and the West Coast have there are three, you know, there are three time zones in between. And so, um, um, in America, we know in the last 40 years for the National Football League, whenever there are evening games in which in which the West Coast is versing the East Coast. The West Coast has an unfair biological advantage, and, and they've shown that, that they, they beat the Las Vegas point spread, which takes into consideration every, you know, every variable they can put into place and win twice as often as compared to East Coast because they're playing at a biological advantage. And there was a study recently in which um, the Major League Baseball players, so Major League Baseball uh, East Coast teams, when they come back from the West Coast, after they've spent some time in the West Coast, they're now jet lagged. And so they lose home field advantage and they lose the first home field game be when, the, when the opposing team is coming from the same time zone. So yeah, this is actually, I mean, this is well known. They, they do get a biological advantage, disadvantage. <laughs>